What up, what up, what up, everybody? How's it going today? It is May 6th, and I just want to send out a huge shout out um, to all of our team. Uh, and last night for everybody who came out and was able to watch online for our Discover Night. Now, I want to put this in here because I truly feel like it was so powerful last night that if you are looking for a way to jumpstart you and to find a place for you to become planted for God's calling on your life, whatever it is that he's called you to do and to find out what you are equipped to do, um, go back to last night's live stream called Discover Night and check it out. Like, check it out. It was so much fun. I had a grand old time. And uh, I truly believe it'll be a blessing for you. And so we have been uh, this week, uh, starting on Tuesday with Sean, going through the redemptive names of God found in the Old Testament. Uh, what's up, Eugene, Carrie, TJ? Uh, good to see you guys all on here and everybody else who's watching. And uh, today I decided that I wanted to walk through Jehovah Shalom. So Jehovah is another way for the name of God, Yahweh, Y-H-W-H, -H, um, is what is written. I am Yahweh, your God. Um, we add the A and the W in between, uh, the, add the vowels so you can pronounce it. But when you read the scripture, it is literally um, like in the, the, the normal translation, not the modern day translations. It's literally just Y-H-W-H. -H, and it's supposed to be unpronounceable to basically show you, hey, uh, like God is so awesome, we cannot fathom him with our little brains. And so the, even the Apostle Paul said it this way. He's just like, I met a man, which he was talking about himself, who went up into the third heaven and he saw things so amazing, he could not express them in words. And so the attributes of God are so phenomenal. Hey, Jane, how we doing? They are so um, out of this world. Miranda, how we doing? And we could literally get lost in them. And today I want to talk about Jehovah Shalom, which means the Lord, my peace. Now, how many of us need a little bit of peace? We feel overwhelmed financially. We could feel overwhelmed uh, in our security. Like we don't have any security. We feel overwhelmed by responsibility. We feel overwhelmed by not being or thinking that we're enough. We feel overwhelmed by the, the, the demands that life puts on us as a mom, as a dad, as a husband, as a wife, as a leader, as a follower, whatever it may be. Like you have so many things in your life that are pulling from you. And what they're trying to do is rob you of that peace, rob you of the joy that God has for you. And today I wanted to talk about the instance in Judges chapter 6 where we find uh, a character, if I can get this sitting right, a character in the Old Testament by the name of Gideon. And uh, if you know Gideon, you know where I'm going with this thing because Gideon was an amazing character because Gideon was the least of the least of the least of the least in his eyes. In Judges chapter 6, it starts out by saying that Israel would walked away from God again. They had started sinning. They had started not worshiping him anymore. And so God handed them over to the Midianites and the Philistines uh, because of their apost apostate mindset. Is they followed God when they needed something, but when everything was all good on the in outside and on the inside, they walked away from him. Which that is basically the same pattern that many of us find ourselves into. I've been pastor for seven years. I've seen it. People come to church crying because they need help, but then the minute they get help, they walk away. They come to church, get the answer that they're looking for, and the minute that they get what they're looking for, they walk away. And so that was the heart of Israel. That's the heart of people in general. We'll go to people because people will give us what we need. They'll give us the peace and the assurance that we need, then we walk away. And we wonder why we don't have any peace is because we walk away from the very thing that gave us peace. And so Gideon uh, was basically hiding. He was hiding uh, and he was pressing wine and he was hiding from the Midianites, the armies, because what they would do is they would come in, they would ransack, they would steal all of the goods of Israel and leave them ransacked uh, and, 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 and burn down their houses. And so they were scared of the Midianites coming into the camp. And so he was hiding in a cistern. And in the cistern, he was pressing out wine. He was in a place that you weren't supposed to press out wine, hiding to press out wine. And then he had an encounter with God. He had this angel appear to him, which was Jesus and Christ incarnate. And the angel, Jesus, came up to him and says, Hey, mighty man of valor. 
And Gideon says, no, 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 no. You got this wrong. You got the wrong guy. I'm the only one here, but you come to the wrong place. He said that I'm the least in my family. My family's least in the tribe, and my tribe is the least of the tribes of Israel. Like, he had a mindset of less than. Now, I wonder why many of us experience no peace. Is because we are, are just like Gideon. We have this mindset of I'm the least of 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 these. Like we put ourselves into a place where we think our mindset is completely, I am not enough. And what happens is, is that will cause you to retreat into a system that was not meant for you to be in. And you start doing things in the cistern that were never meant to be done in the cistern. This is what happens when you walk away with this mindset of I'm not enough. And you start doing things in places that you're not supposed to be doing them in. You start going to bars when the God doesn't want you to be there. You start going to houses when God doesn't want you to be there because you've lost your peace. You're trying to find peace within the next person who will text you back on Tinder. You'll find peace or you'll try to find peace in the bottom of the bottle. And even though you'll feel good for a moment, all it does is rob you of your time and your fulfillment. And so Gideon, because he had this mindset of not enough, he started doing things in places that he wasn't supposed to do them. And so, uh, and, and not saying that, like he was pressing wine, like he was just trying to make a living for himself. And uh, thresh, was he threshing out grain? Actually, he wasn't doing wine. He was threshing wheat um, in a wine press. Sorry, I totally messed that up. So he was in a wine press and he was threshing grain. He was shaking off the stalks so that way the, the meat of the wheat would fall down and that way he would be able to throw the grain out. But he was in a wine press. He was in a place <clears throat> doing something that was totally wrong, all right? And so what happens is God encounters him and he was told by God, hey, you're a mighty man of valor. And he goes, no, 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 wrong guy. Well, my question is, what if God was to show up to you in the place and where you're at? Like you're in the wrong place doing the wrong thing and God shows up and tells you the truth, would you deny it? He says, you're a mighty woman of valor. You're a mighty man of valor. Would you deny what God wanted to do and say to you? Um, or, or would you listen and apply what he's trying to tell you to do? And so God says to, 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 to Gideon, hey, you're a mighty man of valor. I've chosen you to be a judge in Israel, and I'm going to use you to lead Israel into battle against the Midianites. And Gideon's like, whoa, 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 whoa. That ain't gonna happen. That just, that ain't gonna happen. And then as the moral of the story goes, there's this conversation that goes back and forth between Gideon and God. And all of a sudden, Gideon had this lightning, oh my God, this is really, truly you. And Gideon leaves, he goes, gets an offering, brings it back to the offering. And as he's offering this food to God as a sacrifice, literally in verse 24 of Judges chapter six, and Gideon built an altar. Oh, I love this. I'm gonna read actually verse 22. When Gideon realized that it was the angel of the Lord. He cried out, oh, sovereign Lord, I'm doomed. Because if you were to see God, you were going to die. I'm doomed. I have seen the Lord face to face. And then in verse 23, this is amazing because a lot of times we can look at God and be in fear and be scared of him. We can be scared of the idea of God, thinking he's one of judgment. And if you do something wrong, he's going to punish you or to beat you. And in this context, God is showing a little bit of his character. Uh, not a God of destruction, but a God of peace. All right. And so Gideon verse 22 says, oh my God, I saw the Lord face to face. I'm doomed. I'm going to die. Then in verse 23, it is all right, the Lord replied. Do not be afraid. You will not die. And so God clearly spoke to him. It's almost like in verse, that verse 22 moment, oh, I'm doomed, could potentially be uh, you getting divorce papers. It could potentially be you getting that answer from the doctor that, yeah, that it is cancer. It could potentially be the eviction notice. It could potentially be the disconnection notice. It could potentially be um, you getting set down in the office of your manager and saying, hey, we're letting you go because we're downsizing. It could be that verse 22 moment that we're living in. 
And that verse 22 moment is trying to rob you of your peace. Whatever that thing may be, the insecurity, the, the, the lack of fulfillment, this, that, that is trying to rob you and you can scream, oh my God, I'm doomed. But then God comes in answering your thoughts of doom and saying, it's all right, don't you worry. Don't be afraid, you will not die. And then in verse 24, I love this. And Gideon built an altar to the Lord and there and named it Yahweh Shalom which means the Lord is peace. The Lord is peace. So not only is Gideon finding an answer to his less than ideology or theology of himself, he is experiencing a peace because his whole life, he thought if you were to see the face of God, you would just die. But now that he's face to face with the Lord, and now that he's face to face with his enemies, he now has experienced the peace to know that I came face to face with God and I did not die. So guess what? I can come face to face with my enemies and duke it out and I will not die. And so God wants me to tell you that he wants to be your Yahweh Shalom. The Lord is peace. And so I just want to speak that over your verse 22 mindset that you have right now, where you are like, I'm doomed. I'm doomed. How am I going to pay this? How am I going to do this? How is this going to work out? How is this relationship going to be restored? And I want to want to pray verse 23 over you. God says, it's all right. Do not be afraid. You will not die. You will not lose it. And I just want to release that over you today to believe and to see that God is is Yahweh, Jehovah, Shalom. The Lord is peace. And that, my friends, is what God wanted me to say today. So experience his peace today. You can face the Midianite enemy on the outside because you're in a wine press in verse 23 with Jesus. And if God is with you and God is for you, nothing can be against you. I love you guys. Thank you so very much for taking the time. Please do me a favor, hit the share button. And if you would like to know more about how to become planted and to start walking out the giftings and the callings of God on your life, check out Discover Night from our live stream last week. I promise you, you will not be disappointed. Eugene, Tammy, Alice, Becky, Miranda, Jane, Carrie, TJ, y'all are amazing. And for everybody else on here that is not showing up on my stream, I love you guys. Thank you so very much for taking the time. God bless you. And I'll see you tomorrow for another episode of our Midday Motivations. Love y'all. Have a good day.